Welcome to LHA Church. You're about to hear another inspirational message from Pastor Jerry Galloway, lead pastor here at Lighthouse Assembly. It's our prayer that this message is an encouragement and blessing to your life. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, if you will turn with me to the book of John. John, the 15th chapter, is where we're going to head today and spend our time together. John chapter number 15, we're going to continue in this series that we're in on joy. How many of you want some joy? Say amen. amen. The world today is full of people who are looking for happiness, and frankly, they're not finding it. People are looking for something that will bring some contentment and a settling on the inside of them, something that will soothe from the inside out, but they're not finding them. They're looking for something that is lasting only to find what they have on this earth is here today, gone tomorrow. We're searching, it is our human nature to search for happiness when in reality what we need is not happiness but it's joy. Amen. Happiness is based off external things. Happiness has its roots in the things around us. Things like money, people, fun times, relationships, careers, social status. If everything's going great in one or more of these areas, then we would say we're happy. But when things aren't going so well, the boat of our happiness gets overturned. We find ourselves again empty, looking for something else that will meet the need on the inside. We've tried to find contentment in the things of this life. But what we really need is something that will be an anchor for our soul. What we really need is something that will be a bedrock and a solid foundation, friend, that we can build our lives on. I have to tell you, that won't be found in happiness. Joy. Joy is not cheerfulness nor a disposition. Joy is not based on outward things, people, circumstances of life. These things do not have the power to rob us of real joy. True joy can't be bought with money, can't be achieved through the things of this life. It can't be brought to your life through something new, something fresh. Joy is a deep, abiding delight, notice this, that keeps hold of you. Friend, when you're looking for happiness, we are grasping at things. But in this world of change, in this world of difficulty, I don't want something I've got to be grasping hold of. I want something that when the bottom falls out of the boat, I want something that's going to keep a hold of me. When I can't see what tomorrow's going to be, I want something that'll keep hold of me. When I don't know what the future may be, I want something that'll keep hold of me. Joy. Joy is supernatural delight founded in God. It's supernatural. Why? Because it comes from God. Joy is feelings of delight that are founded in God. It has been said that joy is true, true contentment that comes from internal factors like our relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. True joy is eternal because it's based on a relationship with Jesus Christ. Notice this, who is the source of all joy. True joy. Let me tell you, friend, today, if you're a believer in the Lord Jesus Christ, the Bible says there is a fountain that's inside of you. John chapter 7, Jesus said the Holy Spirit's residence inside of us would be like a river 
and like a fountain that would flow from the inside out. And friend, it's what's on the inside that's bringing joy to the surface in your life. Joy is not something that he just simply gives. The joy that you and I have is because Jesus is living inside of me. You see, you can't have joy, true joy, without Jesus Christ. You can have temporary happiness without Jesus. You can have some temporary things that will get you through the day possibly. But friend, you don't know what's happening tomorrow. Those things are temporary at best. They're not going to last. But Jesus Christ offers you something that won't wear off, fade away, or get old. Jesus Christ will be with you through the thick and through the thin. The joy that comes from Jesus will carry you when you can't carry yourself. Joy. Joy. What we found over the last few weeks is the key to living in this world is found in joy. John chapter 15, if you'll look there with me, we're going to read through verses 1 to 11, John 15, verses 1 through 11. Jesus said here, the words are in red. Those are the words of Christ. I am the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off every branch in me that bears no fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes so it will be, be even more fruitful. You're already clean because of the word I've spoken to you. Remain in me as I also remain in you. No branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. If you do not remain in me, you're like a branch that is thrown away and withers. Such branches are picked up thrown into the fire, and burned. If you remain in me, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. This is to my Father's glory that you, notice this, bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. Verse 11, I have told you this so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. What we find is these first 10 verses Bearing fruit, remaining in him, keeping attached to the vine. All find its culmination in verse number 11. He said, I've told you all of these things so that my joy will be in you. How many of y'all want some of his joy this morning? He says, so that my joy may be in you. And then when my joy is in you, your joy will be what? Complete. It'll be whole. It'll be healthy. It'll be functioning as it's intended. Now, the last few weeks, we've been talking about the fact that the key to living is joy. And that joy can only be found in Jesus. We found that joy is supernatural delight that is found in the person of God. Isaiah 46 and 4 says, I will be your God throughout your lifetime until your hair is white with age. I made you. And I will care for you. I will carry you along and save you. Friend, you can have supernatural delight in the fact that he is your God. He loves you. He cares for you. And he will sustain you. It's a fact that is found 
in the truth that he's a personal God. Now, we found that there's joy in the person of God. We found that there's joy in the purpose of God. Listen, friend, there's a God who's in control of all things, and he's your God. The circumstances aren't in control. God's in control. Can you say amen? amen? That brings joy when you realize I'm not living my life at the expense of my troubles. I'm not, my life is not being deterred by what's going on around me. My destiny is not being formed by what's happening in my life today. Trouble may be on the doorstep, but God is inside of me, and God is in control. And no matter what Monday may bring, God is still on the throne. Can you say amen? He's what we need. You see, God is a God of purpose. Why can that happen? Because God's a God of purpose. The trouble doesn't dictate my life. God dictates my life. Nobody else can set my destiny. You say, people spoke words about me. Listen, there's power in our words, but God is the ultimate in your destiny. Romans 8 and 28. And we know, somebody say, we know. And we know that in all things, God works. How I many you know God's at work? God works for the good of those who are called according to his purpose. Joy is found in the purpose of God. Then we found that joy is found in the people of God. Friend, when you lose joy in the people of God, you have lost something very precious. How many of y'all know there's human people in this room? How many of y'all know if you're not human, please don't let us know that? We'll have that talk later. This room is full of humans. How many of y'all know humans make mistakes? How many of y'all ever got up grouchy? Was it this morning? Some of y'all looking going, yeah, it was him this morning. <laughs> the reality is we're human. There's some mistakes we're going to make. But listen, don't lose sight that these are the people of God. These people are on the same journey that you and I are on. There's a strength that comes to our lives when we connect with the body of Christ and the body of believers, the people of Almighty God. There's an encouragement and a healing that comes from being with the people of God. Joy is found in the people of God. Number four, that's where we're going to pick up today. So if joy is found, it's the, the key to living is found in joy then we find next the key to joy in the life of the believer is found in bearing spiritual fruit. Real joy and real satisfaction comes as we're bearing the fruit of a believer. What is a believer? Somebody who's connected to Jesus Christ, who the Bible says is the vine. John 15, verses 1 and 2, Jesus said, I'm the true vine. My father is the gardener. He cuts off. Listen, this is a whole sermon in itself right here in this passage. He cuts off every branch in me that doesn't bear fruit. While every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes. Why? So it'll even be more fruitful. Now, just as plants and trees bear fruit, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, we bear fruit when we're connected to the vine. It happens not because I made up my mind. It happens not because I've had a change of mind. I bear fruit because I'm connected to the vine. You see, it's not the branch, it's the vine. Hmm. We don't have time to go there this morning. Listen, you can't be connected to the vine and not bear fruit. If you're connected to the vine and you're not bearing fruit, something's wrong. Imagine when this spring, this past spring, rolled around this year and you had an apple tree out in your yard and uh, you went out and, man, it was a beautiful spring day. The sun was shining. The, the birds were singing. There were blooms and blossoms on your apple tree and it was just beautiful. And after the time of it, having those beautiful flowers on it wasn't long and it should have had apples and you're looking on it and you're not seeing anything happening. You let a little more time pass and still it's not bearing any fruit. You'd begin to think just like I would. Man, we need to figure out what's going on with this apple tree. This apple tree is supposed to bear apples. It's not just meant to be a pretty tree with flowers on it. You see, it's not about just uh, being on display 
It's about bearing fruit. It's not about looking good. Hmm. It's about good coming out. It's not just about having a flowery thing about you, but it's about bearing some real fruit. And if that tree wasn't bearing fruit, you'd say something is wrong with that apple tree. Listen, friend, you and I can't be a part of the vine and not bear fruit. The bearing of fruit should come from our lives as you and I connect with Christ. The truth is, how many of y'all... How many of y'all know Jesus Christ, when he came into your life, he brought some change to your life? Amen? How many of y'all know some of your life's changed? You don't, you're not doing the things you used to do. You're not being the person you used to be. Some things changed. Your life before Christ was bearing fruit, wasn't it? Some of y'all know what that fruit was like. Some of you have a, a, a remembrance of what kind of fruit came from your life before you came to know Jesus Christ as Savior. Friend, just like your life bore fruit before Christ, then your life should bear fruit after Christ. So why is this bearing fruit such a big deal? Why is it so important? Listen, friend, you and I aren't saved because we just said we're saved. We're saved because he says we're saved. What do you mean by that? Matthew chapter 7, verses 21 to 23. Jesus said these words, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter the kingdom of heaven, but only the one who does the will of my Father who is in heaven. Now, many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and in your name drive out demons and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly. I never knew you. Away from me, all you evildoers. Well, after reading that, you might say, well, how, how, how can I know that I am a believer? How can I know that I am saved? The preceding verse to that passage is verse number 20. Jesus said these words, thus by their fruit, you will recognize them. By their fruit, you'll recognize them. People say, well, God hadn't called us to be fruit inspectors. Honey, you don't have to be a fruit inspector to know an apple is an apple and an orange is an orange. <laughs> I don't have a degree in agriculture, but if I go out to Meyer, I can tell you what a banana looks like and I can tell you what an apple looks like. I can tell you... Have you ever been there and, and the bananas, they're turning brown and they're turning that thing and it's dying? You can tell the difference between something's dying and something that's alive. I don't have to be a fruit inspector to be able to see the obvious. Jesus said very plainly, you'll know them by their fruit. There'll be a fruit that will follow their profession of faith. This morning, we're going to look at some of the fruit that the Bible says should be coming from our lives when we are connected to the vine. Now, I will have to tell you, this is not an exhaustive list. This is just merely some of the characteristics or the fruit that comes when you're connected to the vine. Are you ready? If you're ready, say, I'm ready. ready. Okay, we're ready. So listen, number one, the first fruit we're going to talk about this morning is this, that of personal holiness. Personal holiness, Romans chapter 6 and verse 22. But now, having been set free from sin and having become slaves of God, you have your fruit to holiness and the end everlasting life. Now, holiness is purity. Holiness is godliness. Holiness is the characteristics of God and his spirit, listen to me, who now reside inside of you. The Bible says, don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit? Now listen, if you drive out towards Upland, and you're going out 22, and you come to 800, you turn right on 800, you're going to go about a quarter of a mile down the road, and you're going to arrive at the residence of the Galloways. Now when you get there, it's the residence of Galloways. Why? Because the Galloways live there. It's not your house. It's my house. 
It won't have your personality. It's got my personality. The Bible says, don't you know that your body is the temple where the Holy Spirit lives? You are the house, the residence. You are the address where God chooses to reside. So holiness, holiness is a holy disdain for the things that don't honor the God who live inside of me. Holiness is a, listen to this, is a growing pattern of his character and his nature in me. It's a growing pattern. Now, the truth is, we all don't, how many of you know we don't always bear fruit perfectly? Have you ever went to the store and you're picking out your apples at Meyer and they got them all lined up and somebody in the fruit department went through and straightened all the fruit up and you go to pick up an apple though and one just doesn't seem to look quite like the rest. Maybe its shape isn't quite as good and its color isn't as good and doesn't always come out the way that you planned. Have you ever found there's days that you don't bear fruit in always the best ways? Sometimes it doesn't come out the way you planned. You planned on starting your day, everything was going to be right on the spot, and you can't even find the spot now. <laughs> Sometimes we don't bear fruit perfectly, but listen to me. We should be increasing. We should be increasingly growing in bearing the fruit of personal holiness. I want to let that sink in for a minute. We should have an increasing pattern of holiness in our lives. One of the joys of being here with y'all is I get to see what Jesus is doing in your lives. I've seen some of you the moment you got saved, and I keep seeing you growing and growing in the knowledge of him and growing in your walk with him. Friend, there should be an increasing measure of personal holiness. Listen to me for a moment. If after years of walking with Jesus and being the temple of the Holy Spirit, friend, if you and I are still walking in the same old muck and mire we used to, with the same old attitudes and the same old actions, and you're actually getting worse instead of getting better, how many of you know something's not right? Something's not right. Yes, there's going to be times we're going to make some mistakes. And there's going to be times, you know, on Father's Day, in the videos that we showed the father, Scott, I remember Scott saying, you know, we fell off the wagon a couple times. You know, we fall off the wagon a couple times, and it isn't always quite like what we plan. But we get back up on the wagon, and what we find is the longer we walk in Christ, we're not falling off the wagon as much as we used to fall off the wagon. Personal Holiness is one of the fruit. Number two, not only is personal holiness one of the fruit, but godly character. Godly character. Galatians chapter 5, verses 22 and 23 says this. But the fruit of the Spirit. You see, not only are we to bear fruit, but God himself bears fruit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, Forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. Aren't you glad for his gentleness? Self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Now, I heard someone say not long ago that growing doesn't mean that there still aren't struggles. But what growing means is the struggles are getting fewer and farther between. The fruit of godly character, friend, should be increasing in our lives. Jesus said, by their fruit, you'll know them. So I want to ask you today something. How are you doing with godly character? How are the people, how many of the people that live with us know us usually the best, don't they? What kind of fruit are you bearing with the people that you live with? Do they see you as the temple of the Holy Spirit? 
Do they see the holy God that's living inside of you working to the outside? How many of you know there's a biblical truth and it's this. Whatever's on the inside will work its way to the outside. Which thing are they seeing? Are they seeing godliness and godly character working to the outside? Or are they seeing you and your old nature working to the outside? Godly character. Thirdly. Another of the fruit that should come out of somebody who's connected to the vine is that of good works. Now, Colossians 1 and 10 says this, so that you may live a life worthy of the Lord. Man, there is, that's a powerful statement right there. So that you may live a life worthy of the Lord and please him in every way, bearing fruit in every good work, growing in the knowledge of of God. There's three important thoughts I want you to take notice of in that passage. The words bearing fruit, good works, and growing. Now, people say, well, I thought we were not about works. We were about grace. Yes, yes, yes. It is by grace in Jesus Christ, by faith in the Lord, that we are saved, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Listen, if you did it on your own, it's human nature. We'd boast about it. Well, I'm this way because I changed my mind. I'm this way because I decided to do this. Aren't I really special? Don't you wish you could be like me? I mean, we'd find some way to get the glory, wouldn't we? But God, in his grace and mercy, saved us when we couldn't save ourselves. He helped us when we couldn't help ourselves. He pulled us out of the pit when we couldn't get out of the pit on our own. He reached down and met me where I was when I couldn't even hardly reach up to touch him. Amen. It is through grace we've been saved. But friend, we're not talking about salvation. We're talking about after we get saved. After we get saved, there ought to be some good works that flow out of the work that he's done inside of us. Wow. Man, this is good stuff this morning, let me tell you. There ought to be some good works that flow out of our lives. He said you ought to be growing in good works and in his grace. I want to ask you a question. And this is a question for contemplation. If every member of this church worked for God, the way you work for God, what could the church accomplish? If every member in this church worked for God the way you work for God, what could the church get done? That's a sobering thought, isn't it? The Bible says one of the fruit that should come from our life as a result of being connected to the vine is good works. God says good works are the fruit of being connected to Jesus. Now, we live in a world where we believe in the power of delegation. Somebody else will do it. When I was growing up at home, if I had had a late night snack and I left stuff, you know, sitting on the end table in the house, I could have got up the next morning and walked right on by it and saw it sitting there and thought, ah, Somebody will pick it up. You know, I don't know who it is, but somebody always makes sure that stuff picked up and put away. Isn't that the way our kids think? I just make the mess. Somebody will clean it up. But you know, my mom had a different idea. My mama had the idea if you make the mess, you clean it up. That somebody that's going to do it is you. And often in the church, we think, well, so and so needs to be visited. They ought to get to it and get that done. It's getting quiet now in the church. Well, you know what? The, somebody ought to clean off the end of the building. Well, I'm sure somebody will get it done. Well, that wall, look at that wall. Well, look at that light. Well, look at that carpet. Look at that seat. Well, somebody ought to teach the three and four-year-olds. How many of you know that somebody may be you? Thank you, Paula. <laughs> I grew up in a church where our pastor's wife, if you went, 
if you went to the pastor's wife and said, hey, the Lord's been speaking to me, and I think we ought to start a, a new ministry for this and that, she'd say, you know what? If the Lord's spoken to you, then you're the one that's supposed to start it. <laughs> Whoo! <laughs> the Bible says there's fruit that ought to come from our lives as a result of being connected to the vine. And part of that fruit is good works. It is a prime result of what's happened on the inside of our lives. So let me ask you, what is the area of good works that you're bearing fruit in? Let's go on. You can pull your feet back out there for a little while. Number four. The fruit that ought to flow from our lives in being connected to the vine is the fruit of sacrificial praise. Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 15 says, through Jesus, aren't you glad it's through Jesus? Through Jesus, therefore, let us continually, somebody say continually. continually. What does that mean? All the time. It ought to just be a regular flow thing. Let us continually offer to God a sacrifice of praise. Notice this. The fruit of lips that openly profess his name. Now, when things are going well and the sun is shining and, you know, when seemingly I'm walking through life and it seems that there are no struggles and no problems. How many of you know it's easy to praise the Lord that way? When y'all came to church and riding in the car, you looked over at your wife and she said, aren't you the most wonderful thing in the whole world? And you thought, wow, I, I probably really am. And you returned it and said, you know what, honey, you are the most amazing wife. You know, when you get to church and you've had that kind of atmosphere in the car, how many know it's easy to come in and when somebody says, praise the Lord, we say, oh yeah, yeah, he's a great God. But when you're riding in the car, and your wife looks at you and says, you know what? you got the lousiest attitude of anybody I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> and you wanting to be faithful to her, you say, well, you're, let's talk about your attitude just a little bit. <laughs> and then you come into the church and somebody says, let praise the Lord. You say, I don't want to praise the Lord. I don't feel, I don't feel like praising the Lord. I want to be angry right now, and I can't be angry at my wife and praise the Lord. I can't want the spirit of slap to come all over me <laughs> and praise the Lord at the same time. <laughs> the Bible says that we're to offer him a sacrifice of our praise, the fruit of our lips. What that means is I praise him when it's going good and when it's not so good. You see, it's a sacrifice. It cost me something. How many of y'all ever had some things in your life you didn't feel like doing? You know, kind of like when the clock goes off early in the morning. Clocks aren't even supposed to set that early. But they do, and you've got to get up. Nobody, nobody gets all excited about it. How many of y'all get excited about paying bills? You know, aren't you, you know... Dave is here, and Dave works for the electric company, and we like Dave, and we want to support and help Dave. But, you know, I never get real excited when I have to pay the electric bill. I never come bouncing through the house and say, Paula, it's such a good day because I just pay the electric bill. I don't want to give my money to them. Sometimes you and I aren't going to feel like praising the Lord. That's why it's called a sacrifice it's an it's it's a way of honoring it's my offering to him listen friend don't wait for the miracle to worship him like you've got a miracle praise him now for who he is and watch him work praise him for being your provider while you still have the need Praise him for being your healer while you still have the symptoms of a sickness. It's a sacrifice of praise, an offering, an act of our worship. The Bible says it is the fruit of our lips. Sacrificial praise is powerful in developing joy in your heart. 
Listen, the more you praise him and get your eyes off of your troubles and onto the trouble solver, something will happen on the inside of you. It will remind you that the trouble is not in control. God is in control. It's a fruit that ought to flow from somebody connected to the vine. Last of all, and we'll close with this, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 8, the fifth area we want to talk about a fruit that should come from our lives being connected to the vine. Matthew 3 and 8 says this, produce fruit in keeping with repentance. Produce fruit in keeping with repentance. The fruit of a repentant heart. Repentance is not just saying, I'm sorry. It's not just, oops, I made a mistake. Repentance openly declares, I was wrong, and I'm sorry for what I've done. Friend, until that happens, there is no repentance. Repentance is not a change of mind. Repentance is, I've been walking this way in my life. And repentance is a 180 degree turn and I start walking in this direction. Repentance is a change in my life. Repentance is I don't want what I used to be. I don't want what I used to have. I don't want to go to the places that I used to go and associated my life with. I want to walk in this plan. The Bible says produce fruit in keeping with repentance. In other words, let your life live out what's happened on the inside of you. The fruit that comes from your life ought to line up with what God's done in your life. Think for a moment about what all Jesus has done for you. Think about it. You know, we talked about the fruit of the Spirit. Think about the times he's been gentle with you. He's been patient with you. He's been kind to you. He's been merciful to you. He's been gracious to you. Thank him for the times when he's been faithful in your life. For the times he came through for you. For the change he made. Listen, I didn't get saved. I didn't decide one day Jerry's going to get saved. Jesus reached down and found me where I was and said, I want to save you. I want to bring you out of that place where you've been. I want to transform your life. It wasn't a state of mind for me. It was what he did for me. So now I begin to live a life that reflects what he's done inside of me. I want you to think about that thought for a moment because that is a really powerful, powerful truth. People say it's not about works. And people will say, well, it doesn't really matter what I'm doing because my thing is between me and God and you've heard what I'm talking about. The Bible says if he's done something in you, your life should line up. Hmm. Your life and how you live your life ought to line up with what he did inside of you. Listen, friends, if there's not much fruit showing from Jerry, then you would say, evidently, God's not done much in his life. But the Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a what? New creation. What does that mean? If any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. That means I ought to start living like a new Jerry. In fact, there shouldn't be anything in my life that reflects the old Jerry. It ought to be the new Jerry made in Christ. Now, do I always do that perfectly? I'm not going to lie to you. Some days, I don't hit the mark. But like I told you earlier, it's a growing thing. I'm growing in him. I'm learning every day how to live in him. And there's sometimes, after the first service, there was a lady who came to me and said that the Lord had been speaking to her heart this morning in the first service about the things that the Lord had shared. And she said, you know what, there's sometimes, I'll make, but I'm wanting to grow more in him. And I want her to be more like him. And I don't want to be like I used to be. I want to be who he made me to be. Listen, friend, and the Holy Spirit, here's what the Holy Spirit will do. The Holy Spirit will say, yep, yep, right here. Let me, let's have a little sit down and chat about this. How many of you know it's always not real pleasant when the Holy Spirit says we need to sit down and have a little talk? 
It's kind of like when I was at home. I'd come home from my friends. And my mom would catch her. I don't know how she knew it. But as soon as I'd hit the door, she would know my attitude had changed. And my mama would say, now, listen, I know where you've been. And I don't know what that boy's mama allows. But your mama doesn't allow that stuff. And so you got a choice. Me and you can have a sit-down meeting or you can walk back out the door, take off that old attitude, leave it out there, and then you can come back in this house and everything will be okay. Sometimes the Holy Spirit says, listen, you are living in my house. And what you're doing isn't lining up with my house. And the Holy Spirit says, you know what, we need to have a sit-down meeting here. Because the Holy Spirit is wanting to do what? He's wanting to have your life bear the fruit of repentance and a changed life. So I want to ask you today, how are things going in your life in the area of bearing fruit? We don't have to send out the fruit inspectors. The people in your house already know. The people at your workplace, they already know. So how are you doing? How am I doing with bearing fruit? Listen, I can tell you this. I need God's help every day. I need his help so that I'll bear the fruit. I need the Holy Spirit working in Jerry, putting his finger on those ears and saying, Hey, bud, something's not right here. That's what he wants to do in us. Listen, friend, if you're trying to straddle the fence, you're going to be a miserable person. There's not going to be any joy in that. Joy comes in your life when you begin to grow in him. Joy comes when you begin to bear the fruit of Jesus Christ who lives inside of you. The most miserable people are the people who are still trying to hold hands with the old life and hold hands with the new life. It won't work. So what kind of fruit are you bearing? Would you bow your heads? Father, in Jesus' name. Lord, I pray today that you'd just speak to us. And right now, Holy Spirit, I ask you to come and be with us. Lord, I thank you for grace. I thank you for your mercy. But Lord, right now in this moment, I pray the Holy Spirit would just speak to us. Lord, help us that our lives, Father, will bear the fruit of what you've done inside of us. Help us, Lord, that our lives will honor, that our lives will line up with the hope we profess in Jesus Christ. Lord, would you help us, I pray. Help us to be yours. Help us that our lives would shine who Jesus is. That, Lord, when I, I live in my house, it'll declare Jesus is my Lord. And when I go to work, the people around me, my life will declare Jesus is my Lord. And when I go to the grocery store or I go to the restaurant for lunch, the people I come in contact with, the fruit of Jesus Christ will come out because I'm connected to him. Lord, help us, I pray. Help us, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Would you stand with me this morning? Here's how I'd like to close our time together. I'd like to close our time together in a, a prayer of commitment. I believe you as believers in Christ, you are here today. I believe you're growing in your walk with him and you want to grow in your walk with him. I believe you want change to transpire and continue to transpire in your life. If your prayer today is you would say, you know what, I want the fruit that comes from my life to honor the Lord Jesus. Friend, if that's you, would you just step out from where you're at and make your way around the front of this church? If you say, the fruit that comes from my life, I want it to resemble and reflect what Jesus has done in me. If that's you, would you just please make your way out? You say, if, you, if you're here and you say, I can't stand that long, friend, come sit in the first couple rows. Come and join us.
Just keep coming. I want to tell you something. You may see what you just did as something simple. But I believe the Father sees it bigger. I believe the Father sees it as there's some people in Marion, Indiana, and they're saying, I want to bear the fruit of my spirit. I believe God the Father sees it as some people who are in the process of growing and learning to walk in his grace. Listen, you don't have to tell him you're not perfect. He knows it. He knows it. But he also said, I'll be your strength when you need strength. I'll be your helper when you need help. I'll give you a strong arm when you need a strong arm. Sometimes, friends, he'll give us discipline when we need discipline. And sometimes he'll just pick us up and hold us close when we need that. You know, when you're a kid and you're running along and you kind of fall and you trip, I remember my mom would always do. My mom said, come over here. Now, my mom may have told me 10 times, stop running or you're going to fall. I remember one day, my mom had got me, this was years ago, my mom had got me this, this jogging suit, and it, it had the, the pants and the jacket that matched. You know, years ago, that Adidas stuff that kind of all went together. Some of you older ones will remember what I'm talking about. My mom bought that for me as a gift. And man, I was so excited to get it. And so it wasn't, this was right after Miss Sittawall High School had just opened in the building they're in now. And me and one of my buddies, they had the gym open that day and we went to the high school. And we were there running around and I got to really carrying around and I tripped and fell. And the first thing I did was tear the knee open of that new jaw suit my mom had got me. Now my mom was always telling me, be careful you're going to fall. Be careful. Don't mess things up. Be careful. Be careful. Be careful. The first thing I thought was, I'm dead. <laughs> We're going to have a funeral at our house. And you know what? When I walked in the door, my mom, she didn't see everything that was right with that thing. She saw the hole in the knee right away. And I know my mom was ready to kill me. But you know what she said? Are you okay? Everything all right? You know, folks, sometimes we're going to fall. And we're going to fall in the new suit of grace that he's put on us. But I'm so glad to know when I fall, he doesn't say, don't you ever come back here again. He reaches down and he picks me up. He helps me brush off my knee. He helps me brush off my life. And he says, listen, let's keep going. Let's keep running this race. Aren't you glad he doesn't give up on us? And friend, he's not giving up on any of you. He has great things in store for your life. Today, when he sees us here, he sees people who just say, you know what? Lord, I want my life. There's people all over the world say, I don't want anything to do with God. Let me tell you, he finds joy in his people that say, Lord, I want my life to be after you. So here's what I want to do. Maybe you know some areas in your life that the Lord's working on and Holy Spirit's put his finger on. This is a time to talk to him about those areas. And I want to pray over us this morning. And maybe, you know, you might be saying, you know, Lord, whew, I need help in that area of my life. Listen, he'll do that. Maybe you know an area that is pretty tough for you and you say, you know what, Lord, I want you to be honored in that part of my life. Man, those are things that make the Father proud. And so I want you to just pray about your life and about bearing fruit. And I'm going to pray a prayer over us all. Okay? Would you bow your heads and just begin to talk to the Father right where you're at? Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, I pray for each person in this room. God, I pray today that your hand would be upon them. God, you didn't save us because we had it all together. You saved us because we needed being saved. 
Lord, and we're so grateful for what you've done in our lives. We're so grateful for your mercy and your grace. We're so grateful for your love and your patience for us. Lord, would you just help us today? Because, Lord, we want you to be honored in all the areas of our life. Lord, we want to bear fruit that keeps in line with the work you've done in us. So, Lord, I pray today that you'll help me when I need help with patience. Help me when I need help with kindness. Help me, Lord, when I need help with temptations. Help me, Lord, so that the things that come out of my life will honor you. Lord, that the men and women around me will see you in me and you'll get the glory. Help us, Lord, on this journey, would you? Help us as we walk this life together. Help us that our life will bear the fruit of the Son of God who lives inside of us. Father, these are your kids. I pray today you'll be with your kids. God, would you strengthen those that are weak today? Would you heal those that are sick today? Would you help those and be a constant help to those who are lonely today? Lord, for those that are brokenhearted, would you bind up the brokenness? Lord, whatever they need, just take good care of your kids, I pray today. Lord, we love you. We thank you for all you've done in us. And Lord, we believe you are working all things together for the good because we're called according to your purpose. Father, bless these, your people, now I pray. In the name of Jesus, we ask it. And all the church said, amen. 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 May the Lord strengthen you. May the Lord keep you. May the Lord help you on this journey. I declare over you that you will bear the fruit of a changed life. You will bear the fruit of the sons and daughters of God. You will bear fruit that is in line with repentance. You will bear fruit of the people that are the temple of the Holy Spirit. May the Lord strengthen you and keep you. And may the joy that can only come from Jesus fill your heart. Jesus said, I've said these things so that my joy may be in you and your joy may be in you complete. God bless you today. May his grace be yours. Have a great day in the, in the Lord and may his joy always be your strength. We love y'all. God bless. Have a great day today.